just find a way. Just find a way to keep doing what you want to do. And so that's what, that's what drives me. My inborn passion for myself and my country. We are going to be trendsetters, we are going to be the trailblazers, we are going to change things. Designed to be this woman who should act, at least make a difference in someone's life. Youth unemployment in Africa is at a high. At about 60%, many young people are desperate and mostly are looking to their governments for employment opportunities. But this is not the case for a young man born in Kumasi, Ghana. My name is Tony Senaya. I come from Ghana. Um, I was born in Ghana, um, a city called Kumasi. Kumasi is actually the second largest city to the capital, Accra. I grew up in Kumasi, ha had my primary and secondary education in Kumasi, and then I came to the University of Ghana, Accra. Um, after school, I did um, the mandatory national service and then I started my own business called Horseman Shoes. We are into footwear manufacturing. I was born to a civil, a civil servant. My father was a soil scientist that worked with a government institution. My mother was a trader. But I'm sure my father gave us the best of education because um, growing up, I attended one of the best preparatory schools in, in our neighborhood before going to Frimper College, one of the best secondary schools too. Um, he wasn't that strict. He gave us room to operate, made our own mistakes and learned. Um, so I'm sure as my growing up was fun, was fun. I, I have fond memories of my, my primary school days, you know, and most of my very closest friends were friends that I, I made from primary school. Tony Senaya, the shoemaker, as he is known, had a dream and due to his passion and determination, he made himself available for mentorship and to learn from the expert. I am into shoemaking. I call myself a shoemaker. And from our part of the world, when you tell people that we are a shoemaker, they think that you are being cheeky or you are being silly because in their minds, they don't know who a shoemaker should look like. A shoemaker shouldn't be speaking English and wearing spectacles, you know. Um, I have been at it for the past eight years. In, in fact, I'll be eight in August. How did I start? I found an, an opportunity. After university, I did my national service, but I was closer to a man who was making shoes. I spent time with him a lot after work, had conversations. I would pull designs from the internet and ask him if he could manufacture, you know. So when my service was just about ending, I ordered for a pair, took it to work, and my colleagues liked it. They didn't even believe it was made in Ghana. Then I had friends in other institutions who started buying from me. Then their colleagues started buying. So. I realized that um, there was an opportunity in the footwear industry in Ghana. It didn't matter to the Ghanaian where the shoes were coming from, provided they were of top quality. So that is um, how I started. I started buying from him, that was around 2009. Then in 2010, I set up my own workshop where I brought in young people for us to um, produce another brand name, Horseman Shoes. Through his work, Tony has been able to employ other young people in Ghana because his brand's core ideology is to create employment for young people in Ghana and the African continent. I'm a young person myself, you know, and uh, I believe um, we are in the majority in terms of the population of Africa. You know, so um, I couldn't have looked look beyond my age bracket to employ any other person. So I had to fall within my, 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 my own demographic. That's why I... I employ young people and indeed the vision of horseman shoes is to become the biggest leather product manufacturer in Africa in terms of employment and brand preference. So our core ideology is, is providing fulfilling employment opportunities for young people who are skilled in shoemaking. Every business has its own challenges. For Tony it was the challenge of convincing his customers that goods made in Ghana and Africa in particular are just as good as international brands. Challenges are quite a lot, and um, as you as as you overcome, you still meet some along the way. I remember when we started, one of the challenges that we had to deal with was the made in Ghana tag, because there is that perception that goods made in Ghana or made of Africa are of inferior quality. 
Yes, anytime I went out to sell shoes, people saw the shoes, they, upon first sight, they were excited. But when you told them they were, they were made in Ghana, then they become skeptical. But with time, we, we won the confidence of the Ghanaian people, you know. And um, to today, when you want to say, when you want to measure quality made in Ghana, when you talk of quality made in Ghana, Horseman Shoes is one of the SI units of measuring quality made in Ghana. Um, skilled labor, getting skilled labor to work with is also a challenge till now. Not that we don't, we lack it, but then um, people would always want to sit in their little corners and become masters of themselves rather than becoming a part of a formal organization. So getting skilled labor plus good attitude is, 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 is still a challenge. Um, should, yes, financing, but um, eight years I have not had any major funding, but I'm still going because I, I realize that when you start, money shouldn't be your problem. You have to organize your business well. And um, for the first four years, I did things my own way, which was very important because I had to learn. Till 2014, when I had support in organizing and structuring my business properly. So now I, I, I confidently say that I am not just a mere shoemaker, but then I am running and building a sustainable business. You know, and um, um, access to market has also been a challenge, and even logistics. We are looking beyond Ghana, the shores of Ghana. And getting logistics into other countries is very difficult, you know. So these are the challenges that we are grappling with. Tony has been running his short horseshoe brand for over seven years. And he says his strategy is to grow the brand into the African market at a slow but steady space. Officially or formal, formal trading, we are only in Zambia. But we have um, individuals who carry our shoes as a form of gift items or for personal use you know and then we have had a few people um, wanting to sell in other countries um, but um, it didn't go smoothly because of again logistics you know so formally we are only in Zambia now we want to grow organically because if you don't manage growth well it can kill your business looking at our capacity and um, our output um, we are managing growth and um, we are lowering our expectation of um, pushing the brand into the international market. So, um, yes, of course, I mean, we, we have the idea or we are very much aware that there is nothing like a Ghanaian standard, there is nothing like an African standard, we only have international standards. And we make sure we make our shoes to match or rival any world-class world brand. So our shoes actually can sit on any shelf anywhere in the world. But um, we, we are managing it properly, you know. We, we, we don't want to force ourselves there. We get there when we get there. We are eight years, and uh, in our seventh year, we had the opportunity to start something in the Zambian market. And uh, I'm sure this will be the stepping stone to propel us into other um, Eastern and Southern African countries. In this journey of growth, Tony has partnered with other young people in Africa Tony wants to come into the Zambian market to allow the Zambian people experience the horseshoe brand. His hard work is moved by helping other young people and creating jobs. Well, um, I am not here directly. I am working through my partners. I have a partner here who saw um, how great the product was and thought that because he works here, he lives and works here, he thought that well, um, such a great product should 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 um, people people elsewhere should also experience this great product. So um, he brought a couple to test the market, and um, the response was good. So we decided to take it a step further. Um, Zambia has leather, so in terms of um, going forward, we intend to set up a workshop here, well, a factory, a factory here. So that is the reason why I came to town to look at how feasible, how possible and how positive it looks. Well, um, so far so good. The conversations have been encouraging. The conversations have been positive. So yes, um, we are on course. But again, a step at a time. The Horseshoe brand is now a household name. Former president of Ghana, John Mahama, mentioned Tony in parliament, stating that he, the former president, was wearing the Horseshoe brand. Great employment for myself. Create employment for other young people because um, one of my joys is to know that my running around is putting food 
on the tables of some other young people. He's paying their bills, he's paying their kids school fees, you know, it, it gives me a good of joy. And also starting a shoe brand from nowhere to gain such um, a national recognition, you know, because um, now I think that because of horseman shoes, a lot of young people are coming out with their own shoe brands because um, it wasn't something that existed that some people someone who goes to university and call themselves shoemakers i think horseman shoes has blazed the trail and uh, yes um, we take that credit you know and yes um i have met quite few people um the former president john mahama wore my shoes in parliament and gave me an endorsement <laughs> Mr. Speaker, at this same meeting, I also met, made the acquaintance of Mr. Tony Senaya of Horseman Shoes, a company he started in 2009 by buying and selling locally made shoes from a manufacturer in La Paz. It had always been his dream to build a vocational training institute. One day he saw a business opportunity. He realized that a lot of young people he knew were skilled at making shoes but beyond that, they didn't know how to make their work economically viable. Suddenly, he saw a way to create employment for young people. He recruited them to make the shoes that he designed. And Mr. Speaker, I tell you, his shoes are very nice and very comfortable. In fact, I'm wearing a pair right now. <laughs> Tony has had various opportunities to travel around the world, meeting many leaders and other influential young people. He has networked and exchanged ideas with other young leaders within and outside the African continent. Yali was a great opportunity for me. <laughs> it was a platform where I met other young, amazing African leaders from across the continent. It was a networking opportunity. And beyond that, I had the opportunity to intern with a fashion house, an organization that worked in fashion and the branding space. Even though it was for a short period for, I think, two or three weeks, it, gives me an, it gave me an idea of um, what it takes to build an international brand, you know. And of course, um, Yali gave me that exposure. Um, when I came back to Ghana, I was so f energized and um, determined not to look back again. So yes, Yali, Yali, Yali was great. This young entrepreneur believes that networks are a very important tool for young businesses in order to grow even bigger. For a young business person or for every individual, I'm sure that you cannot discount the role of networking, you know. Um, we are not an island unto ourselves and personally I have um, a value um, my, one of my values is networking and building relationships, you know. Um, yes, I have networks all across Africa through Yali. We still keep in touch. And when I came to Lusaka, I have met one of my Yali um, contacts who happened to work in ZMBC. You know, so networking is very important. And I'm here in Lusaka through networking, you know. So um, as an individual, you have to maintain and keep relationships. In the next five years, um, we have quite an audacious ambition. 
We hope by the next five years, Horseman Shoes would have been an, a household brand in Africa. We hope to have entered into a lot of markets, especially um, West Africa, Nigeria, the biggest economy in Africa, have presence in other Eastern and Southern African countries. That is what, what we are working towards. And of course, um, increase our production to meet all the demand. What drives me is just the desire to create change because I believe um, I can be a part of the solution, not necessarily sit down and whine and complain about what government ought to do or what government didn't do. You know, so it's just purely the desire to create change. His advice to the young people in Africa is hard-hitting and to the point. The future is in our hands as young people. Let us not disappoint ourselves. First and foremost, I believe that every individual has something deposited in them that the world must see. So um, dig within yourself and know what you were created for and explore. Quite beyond that, most people have ideas. Most young people that I've met have ideas. But what holds them back is the fear of failure. But I tell people to let themselves go. Who cares if you fail? Never be afraid to fail. It is even better to do and fail rather than fail to try at all. So never be afraid to fail. Whatever idea that you have, whatever passion that you want to pursue, whatever dream that you want to chase, chase it, do it, fail and learn. So never let your failure, the fear of failure, hold you back. I believe Africa is a great place to be. I mean, regardless of all our challenges, um, we still have the resources to be the best continent in, Africa, in the world. But unfortunately, there is that saying that leader, our leadership have failed us, but we cannot also afford to fail our generation and the generation after us. Let's take on, let's take on the reins of um, leadership. Whatever that you are doing, do and do it well, knowing that you are helping build and brighten Africa.
just find a way. Just find a way to keep doing what you want to do. And so that's what, that's what drives me. My inborn passion for myself and my country. We are going to be trendsetters, we are going to be the trailblazers, we are going to change things. Designed to be this woman who should act, at least make a difference in someone's life.